While you may have been watching the NCAA tournament, what you've been missing is the running of the Bulls. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you here on CBSSports.com. It's time for Burgers Beat, three weeks before the NBA playoffs get going. Let's bring Ken Berger in with us on the phone. And uh, Ken, uh, what has been the turnaround for Chicago the last couple of weeks? You know, John Sammons has really been a huge addition for them. He's playing at an extremely high level. He gave them kind of another score that uh, Derrick Rose can get the ball to. You know, he's a slashing player who can penetrate. He's been shooting the ball well, and that's really been a difference maker for them. Ken, they've beaten some big teams along the way here in the last seven games, going 6-1. and one. Can they be a threat here if they, assuming, they make it into the playoffs? You know, they, they've really surprised me here with the way they're playing. I didn't expect this, and, you know, I, I didn't expect them to be you know, on the verge of passing Detroit. I thought Detroit, despite all the problems that they have had, you know, would kind of get healthy here and kind of, you know, rely on that experience that's been so, you know, crucial for them over the years. So now you would have to say that Detroit's in a little bit of trouble and, uh, and the Bulls have nosed ahead of them. Well, if Detroit's in trouble and in right now, as we sit here on this Friday afternoon in sitting in eighth place, there are three teams that are trying to get close, maybe four if you count Indiana in there as well, New Jersey, Milwaukee, and Charlotte. The way those teams are playing, do you think they can catch up and maybe pass Detroit and knock the Pistons out of the playoffs? I, I don't think New Jersey. Uh, I think New Jersey is still doing a lot of searching, and they're too inconsistent. Um, now, if they can get on a little run, and that's true of anybody here with only a dozen or so games left, you know, anything can happen. Charlotte, I thought uh, for a long time, really since the All-Star break, has been playing – extremely well, you know, as well as any of those teams, but they have, you know, a scheduling disadvantage. They have a lot of road games coming up and a lot of big teams on the schedule. So those are going to be factors here, um, and it's going to be a matter of which team can, can kind of catch fire. And right now it's the Bulls. Can they maintain that, or is someone else going to going to kind of do the same thing? Ken, what about the Western Conference there? It's more of a chase for uh, home court than it is to get into the playoffs. When you look at teams two through eight, really, separated by four and a half games, who do you think is playing the best basketball at this moment in the last three weeks that you think will end up getting those home court spots behind the Lakers? You know, I, I don't know if they're playing the, – they're not playing the best basketball yet, but I think the, the, the interesting team to watch is the Spurs. And I think, you know, they've, they've done the right thing with trying to get Ginobili and Duncan, you know, the rest that they need. Ginobili came back the other night, you know, struggled as, as to be expected, but – um, you know, if he can get himself right, he can. You know, he is a huge difference for that team. And Duncan, you know, has been in and out of the lineup. Pop has rested him, you know, when he's needed to. And that's a team that, if they can kind of gather themselves here and and rely on the experience they have and play through Timmy Duncan, uh, a healthy Tim Duncan, uh, they could be a real factor. Ken, lastly, real quickly here, something you were blogging about earlier this week. Uh, team, no one's talking about for the playoffs, and really nobody's talked about all year except negative things. That's the Clippers. Uh, you were talking about Isaiah Thomas as possibly joining that front office. I have two questions. Why and what would they want with Isaiah Thomas? Well, those are excellent questions. The second one, I'll take the second one first. It's more a question of what Isaiah would want from them. Um, in my reporting on this, since the story uh, was reported uh, during the week is that this is really an example of Isaiah kind of, you know, shaking the trees a little bit and expressing his interest in working and relying on some some old friendships and trying to see if there would be any interest on the Clippers part. I'm told by a source with knowledge of that situation that this was an example of Isaiah looking for a job rather than the Clippers looking for him and that I'm told there's zero interest on the Clippers part. All right, Ken, thank you very much, sir. We'll see how that situation plays out, and we'll see how, well, if the Clippers can do anything in years to come. Ken Berger, thank you very much, sir. We'll talk to you soon. All right, Jay. All right, folks, and don't forget to check out uh, Ken's weekend watch or what to watch this weekend as well. For Ken Berger, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.